Hello, hello, hello everyone. Hi Mifa. Thank you, Jen. Posture check. Starting early today, eh? Welcome to our Joseki stream. Um, today is quite special. Today um, we are finally we're gonna finally finish the central root book. And as a great final to our study, we will have a actual game of Synchro versus me. Me holding the Ibisha. Hope you guys are excited. Meantime, let me check the... Let's change the screen. And here is our study. Synchro graduation day, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, so let's welcome Synchro. Hi, Synchro. Hello, hello, hello. Are you ready? I am very ready. <laughs> I can hear you have confidence for today. I've been, I've been studying a lot of games that I've found with this, uh, with this line. All right, but before that, before the line that was decided last week, we have to learn one more final thing about the central rook, right? The last chapter. Exactly. What is it? It is uh, anti-spearing the sparrow. Ooh, all right. So um, sounds very violent since spear and sparrow <laughs> usually don't go together. What is it exactly in Shogi? Um, it is... Uh, it's an interesting uh, uh, opening. I personally don't know too much about it. I think it looks uh, has some similarities with Urashino. It's uh, where you pull the bishop back and uh, attack with um, on the static rook side. But we so, will we will see a bit more about it. So how it will be different from normal bishop pullback? There's one big difference, right? Um. Pound three four won't be played. Ah, uh, yeah. The most popular opening move in Shogi won't be played. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that there is actually Torizashi in Yagura as well? Isn't it a uh, a tactic to attack, like a edge attack yes. against Yagura? So yeah. I think uh, by that logic, I think that the silver is the our sparrow. We are always like pushing it forward. But in case of Yagura, that's rather lance and rook, I think. Hmm. And in this case, it's going to be a bishop. So it's a different nice. kind of spear, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Journey. Yes. Um, in double Yagura, it exists, but... It's also called the same name in Nakabisha, um, interestingly enough. All right, so how does it go, Synchro? How do we start? How do we play the Sparrow? All right. Um, so starting off, um, because we're playing Senti Nakabisha, it starts uh, pretty much as all the other ones do. And then uh, their first move indicates that they're playing Ibisha. Mm -hmm. So we continue uh, naturally. They... They push uh, the rook pawn again. Um, that's because they don't want to uh, okay. push that. So that's, mm -hmm. yeah. So then from here, we obviously have to defend uh, a pawn trade on there. And then they push the central pawn as well. So that's going to give like this um, opening. And we will see. So, uh, standard Gokigan, you bring the rook to the center. Um, we can't get our Vanguard Pawn like we normally like to. And then from here, uh, we bring the King over. So we kind of... One of the things that's going to happen here is that we bring it out of the way quickly so we can kind of move the other pieces uh, where we want because we do want to kind of get this mm -hmm. angle. So this is position one. All right, let's go to number two. Okay, so... And then from here, uh, Nakabisha castles as well, and uh, Ibisha castles uh, further, now finally getting the king out of the way. Nakabisha castles again, and then, so now we start bringing the silver up and allows the, the bishop to move uh, down. So we bring our silver 
a pretty standard development. And now we kind of get that um, that bishop pulled back position. And the this spear is position is two. ready. Ooh. Yes. So it's the book says that the Torizashi opening, so the spearing the sparrow opening is um, is an opening uh, strategy or like counter used against Furibisha since the old times. Uh, not opening the bishop uh, castle with the boat castle. Targeting for the diagonal bogin, the naname bogin. Uh, diagonal climbing silver, I guess that's the translation. Uh, that sentence is horribly long. What the heck? Uh, <laughs> So it's very aggressive uh, attack, right? Our castle won't be very strong, and it's the characteristics of this opening. It's kind of, there was not many usages of this opening in the past, but recently the Ibisha de Ureshino. So the in Saikin, Saikin. Recently in the double Ibisha, we have the Ureshino style, as Jen mentioned or uh, somebody mentioned, um, without opening the bishop. Uh, Ureshino Ryu and that become trend and once more therefore against Furibisha this kind of play of not opening the bishop and going for Torizashi the spearing the sparrow become little more played yep and we have variation number one right and number uh... We have two big variations in this chapter, two or three? Yeah, yeah, two. All right, so, variation number one. All right, so, from here, um, we kind of continue bring our silver toward the center, because um, they're going to bring their silver too, so we would like to um, kind of counteract that with ours. So they continue, uh, we bring it to the um kind of standard position of six six mm -hmm. and and they uh climb their silver as well so um this looks kind of it looks similar to like some of the um other uh like the the other chapters where the silver climbs this way mm -hmm. but now obviously a couple differences the pawn push and the bishop position so i'm um, not sure if we mentioned but this um this shape it's called opposing silver basically something like yeah. silver opposition like a chess term <laughs> it's called yeah. silver opposition yeah uh so then from here we continue um castling on nakabisha's side and we uh, start bringing kind of other uh pieces toward the center for ibisha we finish our our half mino and then Ibisha pushes his pawn, um, obviously allowing the the knight to come in. Uh, also, f possibly like further um, uh, push this kind of um, attack this way. And this is position three. All right. So in uh, speaking, adding up upon the proper uh, previous chapter uh, paragraph, uh, it is very trending in professional world as well. We had recently a lady pro. Uh, join our ranks that she is specialist of this type of play um, for some reason I cannot remember her name right now but there have been like literal people who play this and become ladies professional player like it's an actual strategy guys um, about this position this uh, the book says that we have 6-6 six, six silver shape and we can choose the 6-7 six, silver as um central rook and those are our two variations number one both are using the opposing silver um in number two we will have sorry in number one we will have silver exchange for both sides in number two we will have uh, ibisha trying not to target the our silver at all i'm not sure what it means but we're gonna find out so this is much more direct fight i assume 
starting with variation number one, going for the Mino Castle as Furibisha. If we were to be a little bit more aggressive around here, we could have tried this. But as an effect, we will be attacked over here. Um, and in future, they will have a silver, or not in future, sorry, or instead of taking the silver, simply silver up uh, would be bad for the central rook. So this silver means we decline the exchange and go for the bishop's head. A uh, very nice move to remember for all the bishop players. And that's the translation of this paragraph. So with the main line is this one. Okay? Yeah. All right. Uh so for here, uh, we move our bishop uh, down this uh, one. Oop, can't move like that. Um, <laughs> it can. Uh, one of the reasons you would want to move it here would be to potentially swing it to the other side and uh, attack going this way. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, yeah, we'll see uh, if it has any other uses. Um, so uh, the here... paragraph says that it also makes you go away from the weakness, which is this one, simply speaking. Ah, uh, yeah. Hmm? Um, from here, uh, Ibisha kind of makes a little bit of a boat castle. No, actual boat castle. They make a boat castle. Yes. <laughs> um, and then uh, Nakabisha pushes the edge pawn, Ibisha pushes back. Uh, we bring our gold. Uh, over this uh, is a good defense uh, for this side mm -hmm. and then uh, so now Ibisha starts um, attacking on that side so it starts by pushing pawn we take back and uh, so instead of trading silvers we bring our bishop up to attack the rook and I believe this is position 4 all right, so the reason why Ibisha is attacking in this situation is that they are stuck with both castle, right? They don't have the option of going for right side Mino or Silver Crown because this silver that was here is actually here. So they are pressured to attack. If they wouldn't attack, this side might make a stronger castle and therefore win strategically. Um, and this, as Synchro mentioned, this bishop is huge here. Should guys remember this? Um... If we play it instead of directly, if we exchange the silvers and go here, this will be timing for our opponent to move the bishop back. So we have to do it simply without the silver exchange. All right. All right. Um, so then continuing from here, obviously Ibisha has to do something to uh, protect their rook. So one option they have is um, to bring the silver back. So then from here, uh, we can push our gold. Um, this allows a couple things. One, it's kind of uh, defending more up here. Uh, and it also kind of reactivates our, our rook to allow it to swing over if we need it on the other files. Exciting move. Yeah. Um, and then from here... Uh, Ibisha swings over to the uh, other file because um, it's just more opportunities on this file than the one that's currently uh, blocked by pawns. Mm -hmm. So then uh, Nakabisha pushes this uh, this pawn because it can, we could potentially um, trade pieces and uh, also clear up the the bishop diagonal here. And this is position five. All right. So the book is saying a few things. Um, simply, as we spoke before, what if they do the bishop trick? Well, in this case, we're going to get a silver for free because they cannot retake it anymore. That's the main point of us playing bishop first. Um, now, if... Nani? <laughs> I should ban myself. 
number <laughs> four, seven three. Oh, this one. Okay, I got it. Seven three silver. Found of silver going up, and then taking the silver once more is a free silver. Got it. Got it. I was confused. How did our second silver got teleported? But it was the other one. And therefore, the only move for uh, Ibisha's side to play it is this one. And as Synchro said, um, this is a strong move. If we were to simply go for this exchange, um, we have this weakness as shown on screen and it would be bad for us. So we use the gold. Going for gold up move next, basically. It's what the book is proposing. I'd imagine it is to put a pressure on the rook using this bishop. Uh, good evening, nobody knows. Depends on which part of the world you are, I guess. Or how you feel like. For me, it's 10 p.m. For me, it's the morning. Hey! <laughs> Worldwide, shaggy worldwide. All right, so we will finally um, finally arrive at silver exchange. Right, Singer? Yep. Okay. Let's right. go. So, okay. So uh, Nakabisha pushes five five. Um, Ibisha. Drops his pawn. Uh, obviously, we can't take because then it'd be hanging. So we have to uh, push the uh, pull the the gold back to defend mm -hmm. it. So we do. Um, then we uh, Ibisha takes pawn. So we trade. Uh, we tr uh, we offer a trade of silvers. Uh, they decline by moving their rook instead. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if if they were to take, we could potentially swing a rook over. Um, so they have to be careful of that. Oh, uh, that's not the reason the book is saying, but yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so they bring their their rook up. Uh, now we we trade. They take back with pawn. Uh, mm -hmm. and this is actually position six. All right. So, um, the reason why they move the rook here is that if they take and take with the bishop, and if they defense we have this fork here the same fork that we were afraid of yeah and it's painfully enough because um let's say they escape right we even can go crazy as to sacrifice the bishop in order to promote our rook yeah and then we can recapture the silver it's really really crazy so it's even more scary than simple rook taking the um this pawn it's like, I'm going to checkmate you. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, right? This is why Gokigen is yeah. so much fun. It controls the center. It controls the engagement. Okay. So, yeah. They escaped that line. And here we take, take. And this was position number six. What they're saying six. that uh, there is option of them taking with the bishop. Um, but in that case, bishop exchange happens. And once more. We're going to harass the center with our double attack. Um, I don't know why there's a silver here shown, but if they were to drop the silver, we can simply sacrifice the rook and like make another fork, uh, go for the ending attack, basically, and even recapture the silver. So we could go very, very aggressive. Anyway, uh, the book is saying that in this position, it looks like central rook is in hurry because there is the silver drop. This time we don't have any cool attack on 5-2. So what should we do, Synchro? What is the next move? Let's see. So the next move we have is uh, bringing the, the rook up to 5-5. Five, five. So obviously that defends from the silver drop because it's not there anymore. Um, and then, uh, I mean, as as I mentioned before, we have the 
possibility of swinging the rook over. Mm-hmm. So they should defend that, and they do. Um, so then we swing it over anyway. Um, and then they have to do something to, to prevent promotion so they can bring the, the silver up. Um, and then um, we set up this potential... Um, Pre-silver eating uh, yeah. barbecue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Ibisha brings the silver up further, um, kind of preventing the the attack that we uh, saw before. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Nakabisha has to, has to protect their, their rook, so they, they take that pawn that was a little bit annoying and uh, protect the rook at the same time. Um, Ibisha drops a pawn again, kind of forcing the rook to move. Uh, we swing it over, att- potentially attacking here in the future. And also just keeping the the rook safe. Ibisha brings the knight up, and uh, we start a bit of an edge attack. Ooh, edge attack! And this is uh, result number one. All right. So, um, as you mentioned, the rook five five was avoiding the silver drop, targeting eight five rook. Um, which they can try to defend a little bit uh, differently. Instead of the rook uh, jumping, trying to protect it with the knight, right? Um, but what's going to happen? We're going to harass the rook, um, then harass the knight, and finally recapture the rook. Therefore, yeah. the only option they have is to go to here. And as you said, the whole variation is going to happen. Ending up on edge attack and this will be playable for a uh, central rook now um can we speak about what happens if they take the pawn it's not written but i think we should mention right if the lance takes the pawn well the most as simple as knight takes pawn drop right yeah knight dies um with the case of the bishop it's kind of similar because we can just take and then do the same thing with the case of lens, I think we can go for stuff like this. Yeah. And then double attack on this square. And the fact is that we are very close to the king, very closely attacking, and they have A, no way of defending that, and B, they are really far away from our king. Yeah. Yeah, so this is therefore um, a very good edge attack here, making full usage of this bishop and the silver in hand. And as a conclusion, the opposition silver the silver opposition, which was um here where was it? Uh-huh. The silver opposition is as you saw very very playable, but the most important move we should know is this bishop. Because this is the key move that you, as a central player, should remember. And a personal note from me, this is why you don't push this phone, because you want to have this counter. Anything to add, Synchro, on this variation? Um, no, not really. It seems, <laughs> it seems pretty cool. Okay, shall we go to variation number two? Yes. Guys, this is the last, the last variation of the whole book. The whole book. Okay, which one right. is it? Uh, six, six. So back here. Yeah. Um, Paradoxically, kind of right Shoggy books don't have the number of moves that are played, so I have no idea which move that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So right after. Ibisha pulls their bishop back. Uh, instead of bringing the the silver up, um, we can also push this pawn and kind of play uh, a more normal um, ranging rook strategy. No, no, no. So we'll it's see. called normal ranging rook. Normal, we will play normal rook. ranging yes. rook. Yes. <laughs> good, good. Okay. Um, uh-huh. So from here, uh, 
Ibisha kind of continues with the the um, kind of the same idea where they they gonna push the silver this way, uh, and then we create our normal central rook. Uh, and then um, Ibisha continues with uh, advancing their pieces. We continue castling. Um, one thing to note is I believe before when this pawn was pushed, the silver was already here, but just minor difference. Um, so we, we finish our half Mino castle, and uh, Ibisha starts uh, attacking uh, by pushing this pawn now. Um, this is position 8, so we'll stop for now. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm kind of have trouble to explain why is it called Torizashi, because in Japanese it basically means like to stop the sparrow in a way. But I guess it makes the sense in case of Yagura, because um, behind the silver there is a lens which is kind of stabbing it, right? In case of Bishop, yeah, sure, it's stabbing, but lens in English literally means lens, right? A spear. Yeah. So it kind of makes sense. <laughs> but it might be lost in translation. In Japanese, it's not even a spear. It's just sasu, which is like... Um, it means different things. Sasu, horizashi. Let me just quickly. Sasu means like to stab and to play. Shogi move. No, not this one. This one. To point. Um, to extend one arm. So maybe it's like extending something. Extending the silver. Yeah, that would be a nicer translation, I guess, right? The bishop is... A, no, the silver is extended by the bishop, or the bishop is extended by the silver? I don't know how it works in English. The one below? Silver extended by the bishop? Yeah. The... Um, no, uh, Jen... Um... Wait, is it? Or did I mistook the kanji? Maybe Jin is right. <sighs> <laughs> yes, Jin is right. It's this kanji. Oh, yeah. So it means to stop, basically. To trust. But it's also like trusting. Stop, sting, bite, steal, pull. Catch, put, pick off. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> stabbing the silver. I guess. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm gonna Google the Tori 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 Sus Shogi. Yeah, if you Google normally, you can see there's some kebab type of what simple Shogi. Tori Sashi. Sashi, not Zashi. Okay. Uh, it's used against... Uribisha. Wait, so it's not used in Yagura? I'm confused. I was pretty sure there was one used against Yagura. Or maybe that, that counts as like a different... Maybe. Different strategy. Maybe it's a different kanji. I thought it's... Yeah, I, I mean, know. I thought it was called the same thing. Yeah, me too. It's spearing this power, right, in English? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Guys, we need to... We need to answer this mystery <laughs> right now. Suzume Zashi. <gasps> Maybe. It's not the kanji, even. Spearing the sparrow! <gasps> I'm learning as well today, Synchro. So, spearing the sparrow is literally sparrow sashi, and tori sashi is the bird. It's not sparrow, it's a bird. Oh. And suzume is sparrow. So, this is why I got confused. Both are birds, but they are different birds. <laughs> But both are spearing, right? It's the same kanji, yeah. Yeah. So spearing so the sparrow, spear spearing the bird, spear. I guess it's the translation. 
No wonder you're confused too. Yeah, we are confused. So spearing the bird is used in central rook. And spearing the sparrow. Why would it be called sparrow though? <laughs> is used in Yagura. There's some reason for why it's called Suzume. But I have no not I'm not sure how to translate this yet. There's some shape that looks like a sparrow. What? Well, it looks like a sparrow. What? What? Chodo what? Uh, when I looked up Torizashi, it uh, it brought me to bird trap. It's like a type of a method to trap birds. Yeah, like, they, probably, but. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I get it. If you try to catch Suzume and you use the spear, it's gonna make this diagonal shape like this. So it looks like you are like, ha! and try to stop the bird. And there is also opening called the bird sashi that, that's my understanding i don't know if it's the correct translation but that's my understanding if anybody speaks better japanese please correct me um yeah so those are the uh, yagura sesamezashi where there is no usage of silver at all i was wrong <laughs> oh, so wrong. Oh my god. But anyway, there is the rook, lance, and the knight, and the bishop targeting the edge. And it's all because we're targeting diagonally. That's my understanding currently. Now, in case of silver in the center, it's also this diagonal shape, right? But we're spearing a bird, not Suzume. And it doesn't really explain why is it called like this in the central rook. Or I'm not seeing it. Bigger bird. Yeah, but also it doesn't make sense because when we attack the edge, we're attacking the king directly, which would be bigger bird, right? And this. Okay, let's leave it as a mystery of Shogi number two. I don't know what's mystery of Shogi number one, but I'm leaving it open just in case we have bigger mystery. <laughs> <laughs> and let's go and watch our currently correctly translated uh, spearing the bird. Uh, variation 6-7 silver with a normal central rook without taking the vanguard pawn. And uh, we yep. were... Why we were talking about it? Why um, we were talking spearing... Oh, because somebody asked a question. But did I translate the reason? No, we didn't translate it. So in the diagram 2... Diagram 2. Are we in diagram 2? Yes. We're gonna make the 6-7 silver shape. Um, it's a very good defensive shape, and we want. Hmm? Hmm. If we would like to be more aggressive, not sure if I showed it. No, I didn't. 
and we would like to exchange those pawns here because we have a chance what's going to happen is silver will come here the rook will go back um, and an exchange of bishops is going to happen we're gonna defend but eight seven pawn drop the only defense we have is to drop the bishop Nakabisha is not really bad, but um, it's kind of weird variation that we walked into. So it's better to not exchange the pawns and simple castle. That's the recommendation of the book. And I'm going to spoil the next move because it's one move. Okay, synchro. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the next diagram is literally 7-5 pawn. And the explanation says that we're going to go for the very, very quick attack, 7-5 pawn. Um, it's often used way of engaging. Uh, it's very easy for central rook to like forget about this kind of engagement. So please remember about it. Usually we think like silver goes up and push. But actually, they have option to like go even faster. 7-5 pawn immediately. If they were to play the silver here, we can actually counter attack like this. And if they try to attack us, we're going to capture the silver. Sure, they can promote the rook, but... We can use the silver to go back. Then you're going to retake. And here, instead of taking with the pawn, boom, knight jumps in. We are good. If he, if Furibisha manages to use the left side knight, we always talk about this. We're going to be better. And this is one of such examples. Therefore, Ibisha would really not like to have to be forced to move the silver to 6-5 like this. And they will try to attack with... The pawn first. In fact, in variation number eight here, central rook will have many, many moves to play. Uh, but we're gonna use a way of playing where. Ah, Sabakeru. Okay, Saba. We, we choose the way of playing, concentrating on not allowing central rook, no, not allowing static rook to Sabaki their pieces, to put their pieces into good position. Oof, that was a lot of paragraph, synchro. <laughs> Alright, so how do we stop Ibisha from achieving Sabaki? Okay, so... Uh, we play third file rook. <laughs> so from here... Not again! Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so from here, um, Ibisha will continue pushing uh, that silver, um, and we will... I guess it's up here because it's position nine. Uh, and then we will pull the bishop back, uh, activate our rook. Um, also, like before, we don't pull it back to five nine because we could could potentially bring it to four six in the near future. Um, so I'll stop here because it's position nine. I changed the piece style for uh, nobody knows because he seems to have problem with kanji. Um, they indicate how piece moves by adding the arrows around. Um, yeah, you don't have to learn the kanji to learn shogi. It is useful to learn it eventually, but I also started 10 years ago using symbols. So no shame in that. And thanks for mentioning that because now I changed the set. Hopefully it will be easier to follow us. Okay. Um, Let's start with the fact, why don't we take the 7-5 pawn here? It speeds up their attack. And our bishop's head is weak, and they yeah. sabaki, yeah. Um, take, take... Yeah, even if we, uh, it's it's kind of worth mentioning, but if they go here and we push here, 
this time the silver is here, so we have no way of sacrificing this pawn to drag the bishop, uh, the knight out, because the silver we retake. So it's in an important yeah. difference from the usual um, way of attacking. Uh, they can just go here and boom, pressure our position. That's very unfortunate for us, and therefore the book is recommending third five rook. And they're machining a variation of this, 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 this. And they say, hey, there is no problem in this position. But it's actually pretty difficult. The main point, though, is that we managed to block opponent's bishop. I think it's still playable from, for Gotte. They still might try to, like, open this file and change their position. Many things will happen, but the attack kind of failed a little, right? Yeah. There's no, it's not a quick attack anymore. Exactly. I'll be a slower game. So this is what they play instead. This is the critical point. Similarly to the previous variation, 4-6 bishop will be our target. And from the position number 9, it will be difficult for Ibisha to find a continuation, but we're going to see it anyway, because the book yeah. wants to show us. <laughs> okay. So what's the All continuation? Right. So from here, um, they will take pawn. And then we will take back with silver. Uh, obviously, if we take back with rook, then our rook would be attacked. So mm -hmm. taking back with silver is better. Um, they drop pawn to attack our silver, and we pull it back. So then Ibisha kind of uh, makes their boat castle, and we pull our rook back. It seems a little strange, but... Uh, you'll see in a second. Well, actually, I went too far. This is position 10, so I should stop here. All right, so uh, as we mentioned, uh, the basis will be that um, Ibisha cannot sabaki their pieces anymore. And indeed, yeah. they have trouble to like pulling this silver up, right? They cannot go forward. And if they would be... Mm, okay, so the reason why they dropped this pawn? Question mark. I'm so confused. The book <laughs> doesn't make sense. Oh, no, okay. In this position, if they would do nothing, we can actually force their silver, right? And then trap it by pawn drop. So they have no so they have way... To. Yeah, they, they have to do something. We are currently forcing them to do something. And then we kind of block them. Um, and that's that's like one of the reasons why this bishop is so strong too. Allowing us all those variations. Uh, if they would try to do the rook here. Then is the moment we play the bishop. It's playable for central rook. Um, yes, yeah, so another way we're using the bishop. And in this situation, if they were to try to block us, we are like, nope. And we go like all in because our bishop is in better position than theirs. And our rook, uh, their rook is blocked. So we are very happy to go for the attack. And therefore, it seems like this is the only move they can play. And from number 10, uh, they say it's the second stage of building your piece shape. So as you said, we start by moving the rook backward. It's very interesting. We kind of came back from middle game into much slower opening, right? Yeah. Yeah. We like shut down anything they could do. So then both of us go back to developing pieces and mm -hmm. figuring out the next opportunity. Shogi is such a game. Sometimes even like endgame can suddenly go back 
Yeah. Uh, or you can have opposite. You have Yoko Fudori when there's no meta game and suddenly everything is the same game. Yeah. It's quite interesting. All okay. right, so uh, continuing from here, uh, so Nakabisha will pull the rook back, and we'll see in a second why uh, that's a good idea. And then uh, Ibisha will advance the other silver. Uh, they have their boat, uh, so they can use both their silvers um, to push towards towards us. And then the, this is the reason for uh, moving the rook here. We can bring the rook. Uh, bring the gold over the rook and kind of bring it to like where we had it in the other variation. And this also frees up if we want to swing the rook back over uh, and play central rook. So it seems a little weird, um, but it works because our bishop can still move here if we want. Uh, this gold is protecting and our, our rook uh, now has a bit more freedom. Freedom! So then... <laughs> so uh then Ibisha will kind of continue with um uh kind of activating their pieces bringing the silver towards the fight. Mm -hmm. And then as I mentioned um since Nakabisha has the opportunity to swing it back over uh we do cuz that's a more uh active file also um uh we don't want to just allow the silver to come in if we don't uh if we don't I that uh, file. And then, so now, again, there's not really much that can happen at the moment. So uh, Ibisha has the opportunity to uh, castle, even though there's not many um, pieces to castle with. It still does, potentially moving uh, this gold here. And uh, well, going away from the center, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then this is position 11. So in my understanding, it's actually a little bit different. Um, you said developing the silver to 7-4, but if you look carefully, both of the silver are currently blocked by their own pawn on 7-5, right? Yeah. So yeah. Ibisha is really not happy in this position. We really blocked their <laughs> Sabaki. And King yeah. to 2-2 two two is perhaps a little bit of desperation move because they're running out of moves. Mm -hmm. They're trying to like pass a move, but um, yeah, they don't have really good moves. The seven nine rook, as you said, is preparing, um, defending the seven five by blocking off those two silver pressure with the gold, and then going to fifth file. And it's very important because we deny got the ability to exchange this pawn and get one more pawn in hand, right? Yeah. And therefore, the rook move is very, very solid defensive move as well. Um, now, there's one thing I was worried about, and the book is explaining it. Here, actually, uh, Gotham might try to open up the position like this. But what's going to happen? Uh, they're going to try the silver moving up. Uh, I see you draw two arrows, but the kanji that's written is Choku, synchro. And what does that mean? Choku means uh, forward. Ah. So in case of generals, we have this kanji that says sideways or forward. So in this case, it's not left or right, it's forward. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then... Silver take, silver take... They say it's a very impossible attack because the bishop is going to give a central rook good position. They don't explain why. <laughs> they don't explain why, but because this is bad, well, then Ibisha should try to castle the king instead. But as we will learn, they're gonna fail at it too. Okay, synchro Journey is asking uh, about bishop exchange. Well, if we were in a bishop exchange, then we have. So that's a seven mistake. More. Because if silver takes and you drop the bishop, there's a fork. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. 
we do have the option of exchanging this pawn additionally but they might try to um, fork up rook and gold yeah mm, yeah i assume this is a difficult fight the thing that we're happy with is that they don't have any bishop to target I want to assume that this move also isn't too bad. They have no bishop to target, and even if we exchange the bishops, right? We're quite happy already. They have no attack, we exchange the silvers. Even if this is equal, we're quite happy. But they say that central look is good, right? So there should be yeah. something better. Uh, which, which were here? Yeah, they say yo, yoi which is good hmm what can we do exactly nothing comes to mind from strategical point of view we have a better castle and our kung king is kung that's not english king is further away from the center yeah from tactical point of view, it's not really clear yet. Mm -hmm. On drop 7-4, yeah, I was thinking about it, but they're gonna exchange the bishops. Um, and then push this pawn promote take take promote run it's like a big fight still i would be more happy from exchanging the fifth fire pawn to activate the rook yeah why not why not this and then push away the bishop oh go yeah here we push it away further right we take this next yeah if they go back we have the option of going here, dropping 5-4 next. Um, they have the option of taking with the bishop, though. But in that case, we are avoiding that pawn drop we spoke before, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And in that case, we manage to either open up the rook line or continue attacking in the center. Maybe that's the answer. Yeah, I, I think that, that's, yeah. that looks really that. good. Okay, so... Uh... Cast link, right? We were talking about cast link. Cast link, yeah. Nice question, Joe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, what's the conclusion? Conclusion synchro. <laughs> All right. So, uh, after this, we push edge pawn. They push back, uh, and we kind of uh, make a bit more room for our castle um, no, kind of we're actually making we we make more room for our castle yes. be confident um, yes yes <laughs> so uh as i uh, suggested before they can bring their their gold here kind of um protect the king a bit mm -hmm. better well it's not really away protected. from the center yeah mm -hmm. yeah um and then uh we start making a silver crown uh, and then Ibisha will bring their bishop to a more active uh, location. And then we uh, finish our two-piece silver crown. And, uh, and then uh, Ibisha will close, uh, I mean not close, but push this, uh, this pawn. And then we continue to make more space for our castle. Uh, bring the knight up, uh, and then Ibisha brings the other gold here, uh, creates a, a a stronger castle uh, for their king, connecting their uh, their golds, and then um, Nakabisha makes their silver crown, brings the knight up. Ibisha continues um, with uh, developing their castle as well. And then we bring the uh, the lance up, which I believe is um, 
improves the defense a little bit because we can run that way if we're no, being no, 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 no. Lance push never improves your defense. Um, oh, okay. Look, it, here you have two options to go, right? Yeah. Here you have one option to go. So it decreases okay. your defense. The reason so why you push the lens... No, it's to move the rook here. Oh, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it actually decreases your defense. Yeah, guys, make sure you understand okay. it. It makes lens cover less squares and also gives king less space. And this is why uh, you see Fuji system attack when the opponent pushes the lens because of the same idea. I see. Their king has no option of going sideways anymore. Yeah. Okay, uh, and lens is the final position, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so yes, as you mentioned, um, okay, uh, let me start with this position. Um, I said the gold doesn't really protect better. It might be a better shape, but the fact that he moved the gold here doesn't increase the number of defenders. So no, no, it doesn't. we uh, talked about, bef about it before, the second day in the previous variation that their castle is very weak and if we manage to be at a better castle we're gonna win strategically we spoke we spoke about this right so this yes. is that pattern this is exactly this pattern they cannot improve their defenses because their silvers are stuck on their right side of the board and we're gonna expose that by building silver crown which is huge for central rook and actually, Ibisha is very, very unhappy with this variation. And in the final position, we do have the option of 1-9 rook going for the edge or jumping with the knight 6-5 pawn type of attack. Uh, different, different ways to like move in this position. And as a result, central rook, we have many moves to play and therefore wins strategically mm -hmm. and as the conclusion to the whole chapter to counter the torizashi to counter the spearing the bird the most important move you guys have to remember to not fear it in the future is the bishop to six eight move which both of those variations we use this move and this is the most important counter attack move for us. In fact, yeah, the variations in the book are not the best variation for the Torizashi side, but illustrates the biggest strategical weapons we have as Furibisha, going for better castle and way of counter attack by four six bishops. All right, and <coughs> synchro. Is it this? Yes. Is it it? Is it the end of the book? I believe it is. <gasps> da, 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 da. We have finished. Oh, Otskar is so synchro. <laughs> Great job. All thanks to Synchro, guys. Please give a big patchy, 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 patchy in the chat for Synchro. <laughs> a bravo. Thanks to Synchro, you had many, many weeks of great Nakabisha study. We've covered the whole Thank book. You. Many variations. Synchro did all the Lishogi study and explained most of the material. I'm mostly host who can read Japanese. But Synchro, thank you, thank you very much. The chat is crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. It was really a pleasure. I learned a lot. I hope I guess I taught you guys a lot as well. I'm pretty sure. Guys, you learned a lot, right? Right? Also, we have to hydrate because. Yes. Popcorn wings. Woo! Yes, so actually, Mifa, next step of celebration of book finish is we're gonna play a certain opening. Yes. Uh, oh, by the way, this study is public, right? I yes, it is. Just send... This is the link to the study, guys, if you would like to review what we've learned. Um, and can we go, I believe this will be the variation that we're trying today, right? 
Uh, yes, it is. So today we have a special event of last week. Synchro chose one of the positions from the book, mm -hmm. and we had few days to study it. And we're gonna make a sh showdown of that position on 81 Dojo, right? Yes. Very exciting. Uh, what will be our time setting for the game? Uh, whatever you prefer. 10, 30 or 15, 30. Maybe 10 because it's already... Yeah. Okay. I think 10. So wait, I'm the Ibisha side and I have to play exactly yes. this variation. So I have to concentrate because I'm not used to Ibisha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Onegaishimasu. And I'm going to change the pieces to Czech Shogi so that... Uh, our friend can follow and any other beginner who just joined can follow the board. So, um, unfortunately, because I'm in Bisha's side, the chat will be seeing uh, the board from my point of view. But it seems that Nakabisha is Isente side, so that's good. Yeah, so we're following the book. Yes. And the prediction started. You guys can vote on who's going to win. <laughs> Let me double check. So in this version, actually, I don't push 8-5 pawn. I'm going to move the silver instead. Oh, nice, Mifa. Nice. I also reported the suggestion to allow the study download so that in the future, if anything happens to our accounts or study, at least we will have the option to like um, download and store our studies. <laughs> you choose me as your side of prediction, but Mifa believes in your synchro. Thank you, thank you. He just voted on me for some reason. <laughs> I mean, I'm, guys, I'm playing Ibisha. It's no joke. <laughs> it's very rare. It's very rare and I'm using those pieces, so... <laughs> The time for vote is too long? No, no, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> All right, and we almost arrived at the position. I actually checked in database mm -hmm. and this was the shape of the pieces that was played in the game I became ladies pro to Q. Oh wow. So pressures on you synchro. <laughs> I think I moved the silver too early, but it doesn't matter. The predictions are pretty close. Oh, not anymore. Somebody bet a lot of points <laughs> on one side. Oh, send it. Bet all? Oh my god, he just bet 5,000 points. 5 oh my points. gosh. Yeah. Maybe I should throw this game. Just to make <laughs> Sen angry. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Imagine one I throw, yeah. That's so unlike me. Journey says, Karo Sensei would never tr game troll. It is dishonorable and not in shaggy spirit. Yes, it's my excuse when I play a bad game. Well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I never troll, yeah. Not because it's honorable. It's because I'm a nasty person. I just don't want to troll. I just want to beat you up. You know? Mifa, dame, dame. Guys, do not throw your games. If I ever see you throw games in Tornito series, I'm gonna ban you forever. Speaking of which, um, next week we finally have, in exactly in one week, we will have the winners versus Katagami Sensei, uh, three, three hours before our Joseki stream at 7, well, 19 at Japanese time. And time to start one eye shenanigans or not yet? Should I start my shenanigans? And tomorrow, uh, Sunday Shogi will be cancelled because I have match on Monday. Um, so, but we're gonna have a stream during the week, which is gonna be a gaming streak stream, because it's gonna be a birthday stream, one day before my birthday, because I'll Ooh. be busy on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the red mate to stop scheduling Monday matches. Ha 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 ha. Haha, 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 I tell Renme something. No, no, it's the Junison match, so it's unscheduled, like unchangeable. I mean, I had to resign from Torchbearer in order to go for a match, so tell me about rescheduling matches, Rico. This is getting complicated. Yes. So the Monday match is Guys, you can always check it on this web page. You can always scroll down and oh, like Shoggy Game, yeah, and you can find my name. Uh, Thursday, wait, what? Oh no, weekly game. This is result. This is schedule. And then I missed it. You can see it's Aya Fujita. The ID's safe. Uh, to them. Pressure. Well, I'm going to do my best. I scared uh, Synchro doesn't know about my strategy. I scared him by telling him about my shenanigans and he's using all of his <laughs> thinking time on the next move. Thanks, Mifa. Not gonna say anything, but I'm gonna say uh, something. All right.
So I googled this position in a database and first game that came up was my game from last month. <laughs> and the third game was the game of my Shisha. <laughs> so, funny do you know. So you chose a very good position, Synchro. But yeah, I have not much experience as the Ibisha side, so this is going to be interesting. I'm just going to try a move. I'm pretty sure this is like not the best move, but I'm pretty sure it's going to worry you a little bit. Everything worries me right now. <laughs> yes, me, I agree. But hey, shenanigans start, right? Yes, it's such a weird shenanigan that it became a sharingan. From my point of view, my castle is like very weak, so I don't feel comfortable attacking too strongly. But hey, better an attack than no attack, right? Mm -hmm. I just have to sing, I will survive uh -huh. <laughs> and believe in my invis invisibility. I forgot how to spell that word. Karokin Skywalker, yes. You hate Boatcastle? Do you hate playing Boatcastle or do you hate playing against Boatcastle, Rico? This is why people uh, created Elmo Castle. You hate using it. Yeah, it is weak, I mean. Just two generals. Next to each other. Journey says, I always think I'm doing great attacking with both castle and then suddenly I lose. Yeah, there are some tricky parts to it. Thanks for the follow. So now Synchro shenanigans start. <laughs> Mm, it's a good move.
speak or think about it when you have rook and bishop targeting your mino and your whole castle is useless now that's another <laughs> level of pain What would the bishop play? But my silver will be useless. Thank you for the follow, Damnit Dane the Lion.
Oops, microphone don't die. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I regret playing this move. This is the section of the game where I'm being lost as a Ibisha player.
the game. Uh, makes Good me game. think. Makes me think that I know nothing about the Pisha still. So, so how was your feeling? Um, there's a certain point where mm -hmm. I would just. I felt like I was constantly in time trouble, and I couldn't think of a, a good move. <clears throat> I think um, your knight put you in the trouble, because your bishop got blocked. Yeah. The silver itself is not scary. Mm -hmm. You had a very good position, you had the mina. We talked about this today, right? Uh, having better castle than your opponent, uh, going for yeah. strategic win. Uh, 15k points go to Xen and three others. Jesus, congratulations, people. Um, my good point is that I can exchange my rook pawn, right? Yeah. And we talked about 4 6 bishop, but in this strategy, this line is blocked, so it's not as effective. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, so this, this line is blocked, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So here you're already in trouble, I felt. Let's like activate my bishop, but here you're defending pretty well. I was a little bit afraid you're gonna attack the head of my bishop. To be honest, I was I was surprised by this move. Um, I expected you to finish the castle. Sure, I wanna attack this spot, right? But mm. if we move, then it can take, right? Yeah, you're kind of trapped. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, it's gonna be really small mistake in the opening because. Um, usually guys, when I come in the games or like turn it to showdown and so on, there are like many mistakes, but unfortunately I'm not going to make those mistakes. So once I get the advantage, I'm going to make sure it stays there until the end. Right. So exactly, from the, yeah. this point on, um, for example, the reason why I moved this gold is because I saw you move the knight and I expect you to attack my edge. So I'm making an escape route. That's my feeling. Um, you're attacking there. I'm just blocking you here. If I take, you're gonna develop your bishop, right? Yeah. Which which I could go like straight fight for like exchange bishop, but I was like, I want to prioritize my rook and give you zero chances basically. Mm -hmm. And here you are lacking one pawn, right? Here you're defending. Yep. In this position, I can play any move in the world, and you can play none. Yeah. And this knight feels extended to extend it. Yeah. Here, unfortunately, I win, right? So I didn't make a mistake after that, unfortunately. And uh, what was your plan, by the way, for the, like, what? which line did you study? I'm interested. Did you, uh, expe did so you expect me to go for this? I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, I, the first time I saw it, I was playing on Shogi Club 24, and I was like, what the heck is this? And then... <laughs> Uh, after after my initial like surprise and studying this line further, I'm like, oh, this is actually like uh, a good a good line that transitions into things that I've seen similarly with like um, other other variations. Where I guess like similar to like the the seven three silver, except just it takes a different path. So I've seen after that move, I've seen how you attack with it in in that way but i haven't seen um what am i trying to say Counting. after i yeah after i saw this this i realized that like the ways you attack with it i've seen before and i studied that further but um i've only seen the this exact like silver path like twice in game and mm -hmm. i studied it a bit further this week so I think the mistake you did, although I'm not really sure you didn't escape this pawn.
like the silver on 7-6 is useless. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I'm taking a pawn is the echo of that advantage rings through the moves. And this is the reason why I could go back. Notice, mm. if there would be a pawn here, I cannot do that. Yeah. Because the silver would die to a pawn. So this is the echo of the decision. Um, which also forces me to probably play this variation instead. Which allows you to go for this counter. Yeah. So this is a very uncomfortable counter to me. Because... Um, you have a lot of pressure on my castle and the rook exchange will favor you with this castle, I felt. Mm -hmm. So this is why I moved my silver back. I see. So in the opening, um, in Shogi we don't care about material, but in the opening and only opening, the pawns are worth everything. Mm -hmm. Ima imagine a position you don't have a... Uh, pawn to drop in front of a bogging, right? You cannot attack. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the same way, you just went down this important pawn. So that's what I yeah. felt. And I'm, I'm, I'm double checking it with database. And this position was not often played against pro and it's only played within ladies professionals. And there is one position where this pawn was taken. I wonder what computer thinks, but it, it there is a reason why it's not played in pro games, probably, yeah. because this Mifa also mentioned my server is in a very, very weird spot. Now, the only question that is left, how do we punish that silver? Yeah. So the computer is proposing to push 7-5 pawn, um, and it's equal game. I have, I have seen that pawn push. I think I just was too caught up in thinking about other things that I completely forgot forgot about it. Mm. My personal feeling from this game was that after this position here I had no idea how to bite your position. I was like this Ibisha noob and I was like crying. <laughs> Sensei, please tell me what to do. I, I was so lost. <laughs> My mind just went blank. I want to play here, right? I want to yeah. play here, but you have the knight developed, which means if I exchange those pawn and take it with the silver, just drop the pawn behind my silver. Mm -hmm. And I felt lost. Um, and you can also like move your rook up here. So I was like, okay, I'm going to play slowly. And then I'm going to open my bishop and I'm going to move my silver. And this time I'm not only threatening to go here, I'm threatening to go here as well. That was my plan. Yeah. Um, and I moved here because I wanted you to move here so that you have rook that's blocked because I'm more afraid of this rook. Yeah. And then I was like, oh God, I shouldn't have moved this pawn. Maybe I should have went for the knight instead. But as I was thinking of this variation before, I was like, if the Furibisha Sabaki dead knight, I won't be happy, right? So mm -hmm. I decided to go here, but then I was like regretting this a little bit. <laughs> but then I realized, hey, let's attack with numbers. But before we do, and yeah, here I, this, this, look, look how much influence this move have, right? You'd have no castle anymore. Mm -hmm. So before, yeah. I was like, oh no, you have three pieces castle here. It's like, okay, how do I break through? That's my last question. How do I break through? I take this amazing position, rook, knight. This is the like the position I always fear to play against as Furibisha. And you just allowed me by dropping this pawn. To be honest, yeah. if you move this bishop, yeah, you cannot move the bishop. Eh? If you move the Can't bishop, really then drop it. Yeah. You could try. Could try move the silver up. To give a protection, right? But mm. then the second you move this, I'm going to push this. Yeah. Mm. It's a very, very difficult position. Okay, maybe I was expecting something like this a little bit. 
just putting a nail, maybe putting a pressure on my rug. Mm -hmm. Something like this. Of course, I can take this for free, but... Mm, the pressure itself is not enough, right? So how do we utilize the rook is the biggest question. The fact that your rook is blocked is the worst thing in this position. Yeah, I didn't like this move. <laughs> mm. Perhaps I was expecting you to play something like this. Yeah, I think I, at one point I was, I was planning on doing that. So what it does, uh, chat, is it creates the blockade on the additional protection the knights of the bishop can be freed. Mm -hmm. And kind of eyes the silver indirectly, but it doesn't matter for now. Yeah, that, that could have been a little bit troublesome, right? I mean, I think I wanted to try something like this. The second I disturb this gold, I promote, right? Yeah. Mm, that was my plan. So if it doesn't work well, it's already losing position. Yeah, but I think I think you you solved my attacks and you defended well. It's just that you were worse off from the opening already. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna quickly ask computer. Mm. All right, there is one move I found. Um, and I think we are also hitting the wall of computer doesn't like Furibisha anyway. <laughs> um, but I found a cool move that I will also remember myself. Here, you can do this. Mm. The reason is if I push the pawn, well, you can go back. One could, one could, one could argue that your bishop was too fast as well, but anyway, the, the meaning is go here. Third file work. Yeah. And then you broke off the silver. It appears again. It appears again. And in this position, computer was happy enough, kind of. Okay. Because it, it forces the silver to go back, and then you have third five rook, and you have pushed this pawn for free, relocated your rook. Mm -hmm. um, so I cannot play this, basically. And it creates difficult position once more. Perhaps this. And this time, your bishop is safe. Yeah. I'll have to remember that. Mm -hmm. Or 7-5. Uh, right. Or this move. But computer didn't like yeah. it too much. But still, equal game. Equal game. Yeah. Alright, guys. Uh, do you have any uh, question? Uh, Journey, I think this answers you. They this answer your question, right? Um, oh, I, did I? Yes, okay. After the, without the gold, yeah. General thing is you don't want to move the gold here if you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Or Bisha, in my feeling at least. You want to move it here, right? Or just keep yeah. it there. 
So just by seeing this, without bishop exchange, if you move the court here, I'm kind of happy as a bishop. Okay. It appears in double rapid silver, but it's for a different reason, kind of. Yeah. But I hope, one, it, it was a nice opportunity for you to, like, try studying yeah. opening and then, like, try it against pro, you know. I hope it rather motivates you than demotivates. It does, yeah. I That's had a, a lot of fun. And really, really big thanks for um, being the teacher on our stream for many, many weeks. <laughs> whole book was finished thanks to you and I'm pretty sure we have a new generation of central rook players growing that's good to hear it was uh the pleasure was all mine all right yeah patchy 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 patch. um so do you have any anything to like at the end like it's this is your last lecture Asynchro. So, do you have any last comment, or do you have anything? Um, do you want to come back? Stuff like this, you know. Graduation speech. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> my graduation speech. <laughs> um, let's see. So, I mean, moving forward, I want to uh, now that I have a little bit more more free time, um, not like working on on this. I'm gonna put my central rook skills to the test even more uh find uh new lines that haven't seen before i'm also planning on studying third file rook uh more just because not only have as we saw in many of these lines it works very well with central rook it's just that i i like third file rook so uh knowing both is is uh i mean useful um I will probably come back. Maybe we'll study a third file rook or a more advanced central rook book. Not really sure. I'm just gonna um, kind of study some more, see what um, what books and what openings uh, I want, and then we'll we'll see where it takes me. And we're gonna wait for you. And remember, guys, if you want to talk with Synchro or to challenge him to um central look fight you can always do it on our <laughs> discord and we're gonna start is uh, blah, blah, blah. finish the stream by me talking about the uh schedule um tomorrow we have morning stream with paul this time we're gonna do shaggy sunday shaggy tomorrow will be cancelled because i have game on monday and exciting next week we will have saturday let me double check. 19th. Yes, 19th Saturday at 19 GST. Tourney 2. Series winners versus Katagami. Three games at the same Ooh. time. Two piece, four piece, six piece handicap. So please, guys, come and watch. We, of course, gonna. This is a live commentary, but we're gonna have a separate commentary offline on our channel. This time I'm gonna do it right after the series. Um, <laughs> for the new season season four the registration will start around uh, end of this month or start of july so you guys can train for three more weeks and rest i know that this tournament takes a lot of effort so let's all rest and prepare and saturday as well after that we will have the mega study of Bishop Exchange, and if you guys saw on the Discord, I bought this book uh, written by Shinto, uh, Saito Shintaro, sorry, and he is the Meijin challenger, and he's a very, very strong player, and his book is very, very difficult to understand, so I will encourage you guys to take notebook and treat the next lesson more like a actual lesson because it's really really difficult book and the title of the book is bishop exchange specifically reclining silver study so we're gonna learn something that 
not available in any other English book. The newest version of reclining silver in Bishop Exchange. All the English materials are 10 years old and this new book will give you fresh light and perhaps understand what's going on in shogi scene nowadays. Hope you're excited because I am. I am. Sounds very <laughs> cool. Does that mean you're going to be playing more Ibisha? No, nope. maybe. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe it's going to be a motivation. So thank you guys for coming and see you tomorrow morning. And thank you once more, Synchro, Oscar, and Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.